Hey everyone, how's it going? Long time no see. I've had a lot going on, just want to let you know. Um, but anyway, uh, today I'm going to do a recipe that um, I've done uh, before. I wanted to make sure it was uh, as good as I thought. Uh, basically coffee crusted, or coffee rub, whatever you want to call it, uh, beef short ribs. Uh, I'm going to cook the whole rack, and as you can see here, I have a whole rack. Um, if you're doing this yourself, try to get a three or three bone. They're a little bit thicker usually. I got a four bone here, but it's also an extremely thick uh, four bone uh, chuck rib, short rib uh, platter. I'm not sure the exact terminology. But anyway, I'm going to make these. I'm going to smoke them today. And uh, I've done this once before and it came out absolutely incredible. So if you want to give this a try at home, feel free to do it yourself. It's, uh, it's a winner for sure. This is the uh, back or bone side. Um, basically the first thing you want to do is obviously get these out and uh, remove the silver skin. Now you can see here there's these big areas of silver skin as well as kind of thick fat cap. Um, you just want a very small uh, fat cap. If you can see here, this is really thick, but as thick as my finger. Um, that will not render out and taste good, so you want to trim it down to about a quarter inch thick. It takes a while to do this, but trust me, the effort is most definitely worth it. Here it is when we're all trimmed. So, as you can see, I removed most of this part. Before you guys start freaking out, saying, oh my god, you removed all the fat and the flavor. No, there is so much. I mean, look at just the sides of this thing. Look at the side. Look at that marbling inside there. Trust me, there is plenty of fat still inside. And... Removing the chewy silver skin is far more important than a little layer of fat on top of that on the outside. So, like I said, done this before, it comes out amazing. Okay, so for the coffee rub, uh, we're going to need the following. Uh, three tablespoons of ground coffee, any kind will do, I just have Starbucks, whatever. Uh, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of kosher salt, um, one teaspoon of brown sugar, and then um, half a teaspoon of some Mexican chili powder, one half teaspoon of paprika, and um, quarter teaspoon of white pepper and onion powder as well. Uh, what you're gonna do is just take all of those and um, put them in a coffee grinder and stir them up real good. And then uh, we're gonna put the rub right on the ribs. I'm not sure if I mentioned before, but leave the bottom, the rib side, all alone. You, that you need that to stay intact. Uh, otherwise, when you take your ribs out, they're just gonna flop all over the place because they're gonna—they're literally like butter tender almost. Just add a tiny little bit of olive oil to this, so the rub will stick a little better. We're gonna get the sides, the top, and we're not even gonna bother seasoning the bottom. Okay, here we go. This is why I like a shaker, because it makes it really easy to evenly put your rub on them. I think we're ready for the smoker. Uh, we're going to cook it at 275 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, we're going to cook it until an internal temperature of about 190 degrees. At that point, we're going to wrap it up in foil and then continue the cooking until about 202, 203 degrees. So yeah, look at that beautiful piece of meat. Picture perfect day out. Could not be happier to be doing this today. Okay, so I think we're good to go. Okay, so we're about three hours into the cook. I'm going to uh, get a probe inserted for the temperature. But look at that beautiful, beautiful bark we're creating here. Awesome. It says 181. So pretty, actually 183. So pretty soon we're going to need to wrap this up. We're getting there. So we're at uh, 
190 and we're gonna wrap this bad boy up it smells insanely good and I mean not even joking like holy cow okay we're gonna need to be super duper fragile here grease off oh this is a really good bark excellent oh that's that's a good bark right there beautiful Anyway, we're going to get this wrapped up and back on the grill, or sorry, smoker, here in a second. And then we're going to take it up to 203. Okay, so uh, I actually stuck another probe in because I wasn't getting consistent temperature, but we're between 201 and 203, which is totally great. And uh, what we're going to do now is uh, let this rest for... I don't know, half an hour to an hour at least. And uh, then we're gonna eat and I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. So hang tight for the, uh, the money shot. Kinda see that beautiful bark. The sun went down so it's not as sunny in here. But anyway, it is a little bit crispy as well. Just cut between the bones, like so. Nice and juicy. Not much of a smoke ring this time. I don't know what happened there, but uh, there we go. So you see, it's all the fat's been uh, rendered, but you get some good juiciness. So take a bite here real quick, and uh, you see the pork just goes right through it, very soft and tender. But as you can see, a wonderfully juicy, delicious piece here. See? Anyway. Mm. Oh. Mm. It's so buttery. It's delicious. And the way the um the bitter coffee and spices mix with the uh, fatty, rich meat is wonderful. So I'm gonna eat the heck out of this right now. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, just so you know, I'm moving to a more permanent residence here in the next couple of weeks. And um, so I may be a bit busier, well, than I even have been the last few months. So I will be around though. I got, uh, I got a lot of great ideas that I'm gonna gonna come out with. So, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys really soon. Thanks. Oh yeah, and don't forget to do all that YouTube stuff: like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, blah 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 blah.